Hey folks, it's James and let's take the plywood house we were designing last week with the floor plans and the elevations and this week let's build a three-dimensional model of it in SketchUp for iPad. SketchUp for iPad has some very interesting advantages over SketchUp for desktop. You can work from anywhere. There's some very elegant things about working with a pencil. So grab your iPads, download all the files I used in this tutorial in the description below and get ready to learn my best tips and tricks for building simple 3D masking models in SketchUp for iPad. So this phase of two-dimensional concept design is now done and now I want to test the idea with the equivalent of a cardboard model in SketchUp for iPad and to do that we will close out this file in Procreate and send it to our iCloud Drive then import it into SketchUp for iPad by selecting the import object icon and if you don't see it tap the three dots at the bottom of the toolbar and select it from the extended menu then when you see the import image context menu, choose import image as object. That's so that you can scale it using the scale tool and make it the proper scale for the rest of your model building exercise. And then go to browse files and find that image. And in our case, we're going to find those elevations that we did in addition to the floor plans because we're going to be building these walls and raising them up just as if we cut them out of cardboard and are building a very crude cardboard model of the exterior only. And when you choose that file, you won't immediately see it, but you want to tap anywhere on the screen and then stretch it out as large as you can practically make it because it's going to make it easier to do the next step. And that's when we take the tape measure tool. And notice that I've included that scale in the actual JPEG that I've imported. And that's because I'm going to use the tape measure tool now and try to get the greatest alignment I can with the zero marking of the scale. And notice that when you have a little difficulty, it really helps to use the axes locks. And I've just tapped the red axes lock and you can see the scale stretch right out there, locked into that red axis. And now I'm going to manually type in 44 feet to match that scale that I've got. And when this dialog box pops up here, do I want to resize the model? Of course, I'm going to say yes. And notice how it suddenly kind of explodes. It gets bigger. That's because it's jumping up to the scale that I've assigned to it. So I'm all ready to build this model now at scale. And I am a huge fan of guidelines. So while I am still in the dimension tool and the tape measure tool, I go up and grab this edge at the very top of the paper because it's a guaranteed way for the pencil to become engaged with a point. And I pull down that first hidden line, that first guideline, all the way down to the first floor level. And if you haven't done this before, it is such a pleasing sensation. So I'm going to take that and from that line, I'll build up again and I'll take the next guideline up to the bottom of the first floor ceiling. And then once again, up to a one foot floor thickness for this concept model. And that has to be manually entered because they're not necessarily snapping to the dimensions I want. And I won't show you the whole thing because I just keep pulling these lines to all these uh, important points that I'm going to start building from. But once all these lines are in place, I can start building the actual objects that will make up my elevation. And there's no single best way to do this. In other words, I shouldn't build necessarily the exterior perimeter of this building first. I'm just going to start with the windows because they're there right in front of me. And to do that, I grab the rectangle tool and just it locks into these points that these guidelines created. It's so comfortable and easy. And I start at the top left and pull down and create these rectangles. And of course, there are many repeating windows in this design. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first rectangle. And down below in the context menu, I'm going to press the group icon so that as a group it will be easier to copy and, and duplicate in other places on this elevation. And being a group has the other advantage of kind of protecting it, so now I have to double tap inside that group to open it if I want to keep working on it. And I do that because I want to use the offset tool now to add just that little sash around the edges. And to do that, uh, again, the offset tool, an elegant thing where you can manually enter the amount of the offset you want. And I'll do the same with this second group in the operable window to the side. And actually, this one is a component that's a little too complicated for this video to discuss, but you can learn all about components and groups in my online course in SketchUp for iPad. 
So now I'll break open that group of the ventilation window and I'll add a larger sash to that because it's typical of a ventilation window that it's going to need extra reinforcement around the edges in order to be an operable window. So that gives me my first set, my so-called uh, square picture window with an operable side window because remember we're also trying to make a sustainable and affordable house here. Impossible wishes maybe, but we'll see if it turns out in the end. So with both the square window and the operable window selected, I now go to the move tool and from the context menu, I select the duplicate part of the move tool. In other words, once I touch this, it will duplicate it and leave the original in place. And I'm going to pull that down. I'm considering using the axes lock, you can tell in case there are any problems, but this usually works pretty well, especially given that there are guidelines there already. And I'm just going to pull it down and instantly have my window uh, that's in the bedroom below. So the top window is the master bedroom, as you recall from the plan, and the lower window will be one of the uh, one of the windows in one of the guest bedrooms or children's bedrooms. And Again, we talked about components and advantages. We talk about that in the online course, but you can see if I want to alter that upper window, the same thing will occur to the lower window. So it's not that complicated. It's just a little too detailed for this video, but components have this incredible power to, uh, if you use them strategically, they will allow you to alter things when you're well down the road with the model with a, an absolute minimum of effort. Now I want to stay on a roll here. I obviously built out the rest of these facades and these windows and it was very straightforward. Everything you need to know you just learned in the last three minutes or so. And you can tell that I've grouped these elevations together so that when I turn off the background in the tag section, uh, they're all isolated on their own just as if you had cut them out of cardboard and they were waiting on your X-Acto knife cutting board and fresh and ready to go to create this three-dimensional model, which is very exciting because it's going to be the first time I get to test this thing in three dimensions. And to be honest, I don't know what it's gonna look like. So, so let's discover that together. And to do that, I'm gonna go back to the import image tool, import image as object. I'm going to go back to my files and this time I'm going to bring in that floor plan that we did, those two floor plans we did. And I'm going to use it like back in the day when we used to stretch out a piece of paper plan and we would cut out our chipboard and museum board facades and start assembling with Elmer's glue and pins. And I am ready as the underlay is imported, I'm ready to now assemble these facades on top of that. Now, just to be clear and show you how I rotate these facades, I'm going to turn off that floor plan and I'm going to select the rotation tool. And notice it comes in, this is classic SketchUp, uh, forgive me SketchUp people, but you never really know where that rotation axis is going to be. But in SketchUp for iPad, it's especially easy with a drop down menu next to the rotation tool. You can use these axes locks to guarantee that it will be rotating in the uh, direction and along the axes that you want. And so here I've selected the red axes locks and I'm just going to tap the corner ever so slightly and extend that cursor out along that axis and then rotate it up and just as easy as you please, it's there. I then select the move tool and bring it over to the XYZ origin and that's not strictly necessary, by the way, but I like to do it as a completionist. And now in the interest of time, I've done the same thing for the other three facades. And I'm leaving this last facade and let's go over the whole process again. Easy as pie, you're going to select the rotation tool. And then if you want to, you're going to select the axis lock. In this case, the blue came in, so I, I needed to rotate that facade first. I've gone ahead and done that. And now I've got to find that proper axis to rotate this along. And that's going to be the green axis this time. So I'm going to, so I'm going to tap on some significant and easy to find point on the facade. And in this case, the one that's right next to the uh, corner of the buildings and the chimney is going to be dealt with later. And I I'm going to rotate it up and then use the move tool to take it across and join it to the other three facades. And now I have a complete four facaded cardboard model and I can take the next steps based on that. So I've brought back the floor plan by turning the tag back on and notice that the floor plan is not aligning perfectly with the four facades. And that's why you bring it in as an image object because 
SketchUp treats any object the same, and therefore I can scale this floor plan, even though it's flat and two-dimensional. And so I'm going to begin scaling it in just by eye. I'm not going to get overly precise about it because it is concept design. And I've got the width close enough now, but I'm just going to go one step further and zoom in here and make sure that the corner of the floor plan aligns with the corner of the four facades. And it kind of snaps there almost mysteriously. I'm not sure I arranged to have it do so well, but I'm liking how the alignment is now. And now I can go over to some of the detailed steps. Now we've talked about how SketchUp can be a dangerous, even though it's a fantastic tool, it can be a dangerous tool because it encourages a completionist like me to spend way too much time getting every detail correct. So I select those isolated porch elevations. Uh, they're set in there and easy to separate as a group. And I push it back and I go to the depth that I want using the dimension dialog box. And once that happens, you'll, you'll see some mistakes in your model. Not mistakes, but you'll see parts like where you would have left the cardboard uncut when you're making a physical model. So we just quickly patch those. I like to use those guidelines again to make very quick patches. And you can see that the floor is locked in place now. And now I'll complete this ceiling just so the model looks good and also so it creates shadows because I did forget to mention that what we're building up to here is completing this model so we can make renderings of the model, which will be the video for next week in this series. So in order to finish the basics of the model, I'm going to pull again from that metaphor of the cardboard model and I'm actually going to put topo lines in the base of this model and I use the freehand drawing tool for that and I just make sure I cut across the borders of this rectangle so that uh, everything's nice and cleanly understood by SketchUp and I'm even going to put in a, a low stone wall by initially drawing the line and then duplicating it and moving it about two feet now, each of these uh, subdivisions, each of these topographical subdivisions, like in the old cardboard models, is now an entity and can be tapped and raised into place with the Push Me Pool You tool. And then for each of these topographical layers below that stone wall, I'll just press them down at two feet at a time. Actually, I'll add them up and go down to the lowest one so I know how far down that has to go. Then I'll work my way back up two feet at a time. So it is a literal recreation of the cardboard model aesthetic. That may not be right for you youngsters out there, but for us old schoolers, we're really attached to that kind of thing. And so now I've got uh, a lot of character I can use in framing the view for this rendering. And of course, no Procreate to SketchUp workflow would be complete without the SketchUp warehouse. So I'll show you my one trick for that which is to dial down the size of the files that you're searching for under properties, dial down file size and the number of polygons. And you'll find that most of the same selections still come up. And I'm looking for some good patio furniture here to uh, just give the outside of the house some scale. I'll use it as a reference later in the rendering. And I always like to find the simplest things I can. I prefer white and it's so hard to find those anymore these days. SketchUp used to have a fantastic library of their own all-white stuff, and this is close to it. So I'll bring in those lounge chairs, and when you tap on the screen, those will appear. They sometimes hide behind things, and you could see me scooting around until they became visible. And I need to lower these now to the right place, or raise them to the right place, so they'll cast their shadows on the ground. But once again, the pencil makes it so easy to find these vertices that help you bring something down to anchor it to the ground, or even to rotate it in place. So keep in mind that the entire purpose of this workflow is to show you how we go from earliest sketch to plans to 3D models that we use as the background for hand renderings. And that's because this client seemed to respond very well to this kind of hand-drawn approach to their design. It felt very personal to them and at a scale that they could easily understand. And the first view that we're going to do is going to be based on a eye-level view. So we want to be sure that the horizon in the distance, that junction between the gray part and the blue part of the sky, is also at the eye level of the scale figure. And like any good streaming series, I will leave that for the next episode 
episode where I will show you all kinds of tricks for making sure you pick the best view of your subject while you're in SketchUp and then transporting it, exporting it over to Procreate once again, where we will start to render it and you're going to love that session. So remember to go deeper on any of the tips or techniques you've seen in this video or to begin to make the transition over to iPad drawing, check out the links to my online courses in the description below. To see the next video in this series, click right here and I will see you in the next video.